Welcome, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about some of our recent work where we have found with explainable deep learning that the classically studied coherent structures only paint a partial picture of wall bounded turbulence. This research is funded by the, by the ERC, the European Research Council, and I'm going to tell you a bit more about it. So this follows up on some of our uh, research work in previous in previous videos. Uh, as you know, we're interested in answering uh, the question, what are the most important regions of the flow? Uh, this is something that on the one hand, uh, Thinar and Jimenez have studied uh, with intrusive uh, methods. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, Lucena Duran and Arant have been studying uh, using information theory and causality. So the type of questions that we want to uh, tackle are similar. The methods are slightly different. So we use uh, an intrusive uh, method on a surrogate. Uh, so we kind of combine both in a way. Uh, we build a deep learning model that is uh, helping us to build this surrogate model. Uh, and then we're going to be doing uh, changes on that surrogate model to understand what is more important there. The method. And this is work uh, developed by Andres Cremades and collaborators. This is in Nature Communications. So you can really see uh, all the data and all the codes in this uh, publication that you can see at the bottom. The method uh, is based on Shapley explanations. In the first step, what we do is that we have to uh, create a deep learning model, for example, through a 3D unit. Uh, where uh, the input data is a uh, three-dimensional velocity fluctuations. So I have the V, W, and the, and the U fluctuation fields, which are 3D at the present time, and we'll predict the three-dimensional fields, U, V, and W fluctuations in a future time. And we do this uh, generally for a range of viscous times between 1 to 10. The results are very robust in this range, so we'll focus on results where the uh, input data and the output data are separated by five viscous times. Uh, in the second step, we're going to segment the input, and in the approach that we're going to be talking about today, we're not going to take a Q events as an input, we're going to take each grid point of the input separately. Okay, I'll tell you more about it in just a few, a few minutes. And uh, once those inputs are selected, then we're going to use this uh, Shapley method in particular. Uh, this was initially developed with the kernel Shap. Later on, we moved to the gradient Shap. Uh, in a nutshell, what we are doing is remove features from the input and then repeat the predictions, comparing basically the predicted fields and the ground truth. And then we can really classify all the features uh, of the input in terms of their contribution uh, to that prediction. So if the prediction changes a lot when I remove a certain feature, that must be a very important feature. And then we can create a ranking, uh, which is basically given by these importance scores or also called sharp values uh, that allow us to, to really uh, analyze the importance of all these parameters. So this is something that we did uh, experimentally first. So we took an experimental data set. This is data um, by Ivan Marusek's group. Uh, the idea is that we can use this gradient sharp methodology. Gradient sharp is uh, just a more efficient way to calculate these uh, sharp values. Um, and we can do it on each grid point. Uh, so you can see here uh, that we can calculate for each of the fluctuations for U and V, we can calculate a norm of the sharp value. And we can compare that with the RMS of the sharp value in U and V in such a way that I can basically uh, create a percolation analysis. Uh, this this H that you can see here, this is the hyperbolic uh, threshold, and this is uh, calculated such that the number of structures is maximized. If I have a very small value of H, then basically everything satisfies these properties. So I have one big blob. That's, that's it. As I increase age, what happens is that progressively fewer and fewer points satisfy this property. So eventually I end up with zero structures because nothing is really um, satisfying the, the, this condition. Uh, therefore, I have a function with a one on one side, with a zero on the other side, then it must have a maximum in between. Uh, and then we're going to try to target that maximum. So we're going to find the age value, which maximizes the number of structures such that, um, in fact, this, uh, this value is typically beyond the percolation crisis, which is typically a good way to, to analyze these, these structures and to get a pretty good uh, view of their, of their physical implications. Now, what I'm showing you here at the bottom is a, for an instantaneous flow field in this experimental data set. Uh, in black, I'm showing you the Q events. In green, I'm showing you the sharp structures. So these structures based uh, purely on importance, purely based on the objective assessment of what is important and what is not in our flow. 
And again, this was published in our Nature Communications paper, so this is available online. The new results, the new analysis that we did was uh, in 3D. So we basically wanted to uh, go beyond these 2D results to a fully 3D analysis on a DNS dataset. So we took a, a DNS a database at a low Reynolds number. This is an Arita 125 for computational uh, convenience. This is a quite big box, as you can see. And uh, this is work uh, together with Andres Kermades and Sergio Ollas. You can see uh, the preprint and archive. So all the details are there. You can check it out and get all the results. Uh, the main idea is the following. We are taking for each of the flow fields of this data set, we are calculating three classically studied coherent structures, the Q events, which we have talked about um, here in the channel a few times. Uh, these are uh, regions of intense Reynolds shear stress. The vortices, vortex clusters, we have shown many visualizations looking at vortices. These are in particular uh, using the method by Chong and others, but at the end, the different methods give very similar results. These are just the, the, the vortices, the vortex clusters. And here on the bottom left panel, I'm showing you streaks, basically the near wall streaks, uh, which have also been studied since Klein, since Klein and others and many others uh, several decades ago, uh, which are uh, responsible um, for the production mechanisms close to the wall. In the top left uh, panel, I'm showing you these sharp structures. So the regions for the same instantaneous flow field, all the four panels correspond to the same flow field, uh, the regions that objectively are the most important to be able to predict the fluctuations in a future step. So these are, uh, based on this data-driven approach, objectively the most important structures in the field. And what we can show you here is uh, a joint PDF, a joint priority density function, uh, of the sharp structures here in big, where the vertical axis is the uh, inner scale wall normal location. The horizontal axis is the inner scale uh, streamwise velocity fluctuation. So you can see all this distribution for these sharp structures. And on the right, I'm showing you the same joint PDF for the Q events in blue, the streaks in green, and the vortices in red. What is interesting is that these uh, distributions uh, have quite some similarity. So you can see, for instance, that here, very close to the wall, you have very close agreement with this region of the Q events. In particular, these are sweeps because these are regions of extreme-wise uh, velocity fluctuation going down. Up here, you have a region in very good agreement with this part of the Q events. These are actually ejections. Uh, which are then uh, structures with a negative stringless fluctuation going upwards. So you can see that uh, close to the wall and far away from the wall, there is some resemblance between the sharp structures and the Q events. If I go to Y plus 15, that's the near wall uh, peak, uh, you can actually see, again, very close agreement between this uh, region over here and this region. That's the low speed streaks because it has a negative stringwise velocity fluctuation. And this region is in agreement with that one. Those are the high speed streaks with a positive uh, stringwise velocity fluctuation. Even more, you will realize that the definitions for Q events and streaks uh, do not include any region for zero stringwise velocity fluctuation. However, the shop have some um, have some contribution of structures with zero stringless velocity fluctuation. You can actually see that this region close to the center of the channel resembles uh, slightly uh, that of the of the vertical motions. Okay, so in fact, there is a little bit of vortices in the shop structure. So remember that the sharp structures are the most important ones, objectively identified with explainable deep learning. And what we're going to do now is look at the point-by-point -point coincidence, the point-by-point -point agreement between the different types of structures. So here in the vertical axis, I'm showing you the percentage of agreement between structures. This is done point-by-point -point for each uh, time step and then average uh, over the whole data set, basically. In the horizontal axis, I'm showing you the inner scale wall normal location. And you can see a few lines. No? So this um, blue line over here indicates that at Y plus 15, the sharp structures are basically streaks. The agreement is over 90%. Uh, so the most important regions of the flow at Y plus 15 are basically streaks. And this agreement with the streaks goes basically to zero, both at the wall and close to the center. Close to the wall, I have between 60 and 70% agreement between the sharp events and the Q events. So this would be basically the sweeps. Same happens close to the center of the channel, 60-70% agreement between the sharp and the Q, in particular these are the ejections. 
close to the channel center, I have about 25% agreement between the sharp structures and the vortices. So this is uh, actually sending us a pretty interesting message. You know, this really tells me that the classical structures uh, were not completely wrong. They were obviously present in the flow and they explain part of the flow in different regions. Uh, but honestly, none of them were actually uh, giving a complete description of the flow. The classically studied structures were only painting a partial picture of wall boundary turbulence. And now, with explainable deep learning, we can actually find an objective way to study turbulence in a way that we can uh, probably uh, get completely new insights into the fundamental mechanisms of wall boundary turbulence. So we're very excited about these results, and we're actually uh, analyzing many other configurations, many other cases, which will come up in the next few months, hopefully. Uh, so you can really see how these uh, sharp based explanations can help us to, to understand turbulence in a deeper level. And this is all I had for today. I want to uh, remind you that you can find all the codes and all the data in this QR repository. So just feel free to check it out. Um, you can also follow me in my social media and you can also um, find more videos uh, here in the, in the channel. With that, I would like to um, thank you for your attention and see you next time. Bye.